Okay, this is video one in this series of Gaia for Beginners. Um, in this first video, we're going to be talking about the primitive items that are here and also some of the general concepts of uh, building uh, a world as it comes from a, a Gaia standpoint. So if you've used other software before, something say like World Machine, we'll take a quick look at that. And uh, if you're completely new to this concept of generating uh, a procedural world, uh, I will talk about some elements of that as well that you need to know in order to understand what you're doing. So starting off, when you first open up Gaia, you'll be asked if you want to work in a nodes based mode or if you would like to work in a layers based mode. The node based mode is fairly simple. You simply drag uh, connections across and then let them go and they will connect for you. You can also do things like if I just grab this I'll just shift delete those to get rid of them. I can go ahead and use a displace and I can drag and drop which will auto connect that for me and erosion drag and drop and it will auto connect and it's pretty straightforward like that. At the same time we can instead work in a layers based mode. If I don't just want to switch I can switch at any time and we go into the layers based mode which again is fairly simple. We've got these in here. If I just want to right click I can go ahead and delete that. And then adding them back is just a matter of going through here and picking the ones that you want. So if I want to displace it and erode it, and we get this. So it's all pretty much the same idea. It just does all the connections automatically for you. And you still have a lot of the right click features that you would normally have in the other method. The only thing is that um, connecting between different things is maybe a little bit more awkward uh, than it is in there. So uh, it's a lot easier for you to deal with. It's a lot less intimidating for someone who's a complete beginner. However, um, the uh, graph mode is the mode where you have the most overall control. Now, Let's take a look at the idea of a primitive here. With this mountain, we have a shape that's here. Well, we see it looks mountain-like, but um, there isn't anything that just says, hey, let's make a mountain. Uh, this is actually a series of different sort of fractals being applied together in order to generate this along with a radial gradient. In fact, if I were to go into World Machine, in order to get something like this, I would have to go through th several steps or have a macro that was originally generated for me. So here I've got a Perlin noise going into forming a Voronoi, which then goes into an advanced Perlin, which adds more Perlin noise uh, vertically instead of horizontally. And then of course a radial, a radial gradient to cut off the edges. And we have something that looks like a mountain um, generation similar to what we have inside of Gaia. So I don't know that these are the exact combinations. There's probably other things going on in there, but uh, this is essentially, you know, the, the type of steps that you would have to go through in order to uh, start refining this in order to, to get something different. I would then have to go into each one of these individual nodes in order to change these features which can be a, a bit of a pain. So first they have to be connected manually, then I have to go back in and each one has to be adjusted. So it can be a, a bit more, more work to work in this granular mode. So the idea of primitives is to get you a very good starting point very quickly and allow you to very quickly be able to change those factors uh, without too much difficulty. So of course we have the overall scale of the fractal 
and that will change like the smaller details versus the larger details uh, within there. Then we have the overall edge, just change to uh, a shape. You can see the edge a little bit better. So as I bring this up, you can see the edge cutoff goes further in, further out. And then we have the seed, which changes the fractal itself. So if you want a completely different mountain with much the same kind of elements, you just change the seed. If you use the same seed as me with the same values, you should end up with the same mountain. Because these are multiple um, elements mixed together, there are different sort of recipes for their mixture. So if we go in here, we have type A, type B, type C, and type D. And you'll notice as we switch through these different uh, ones that the shape is very similar in a lot of them, but the combination of these things deform it in different ways. Another way in which you can adjust this is going through the different ways in which it represents height. This could be like adjusting things like gamma or levels if you're uh, familiar with Photoshop in order to adjust these things. That little effect right there, this is a, a value cutoff that's happening. It's just a, a, a visual artifact and it's uh, simple enough to deal with. In addition to this, we also have things like the actual influence, if you want to change that. We can also auto level it. We have the invert, bias gain, etc., etc. They're all in here. How this is represented, if again, if you're new to um, these these sort of software, is if I go ahead and go to the 2D view, you can see that we have a general height map. What this means is, is the brighter the value, the higher the point. The darker the value, the lower the point. The software only sees it as a 2D bit of information, just this height information. So what this means is that if I were to go ahead and let's do something like cells to this, what you see here is that height information And if we look at the sides, there's no detail on the sides. Even if I went to go ahead and do a bunch of different uh, adjustments to this, if they're pure vertical, there won't be any information there because these are just vertices which are pushed straight up. In order to get detail on the sides, you will have to go to an additional piece of software, something say like ZBrush, where you can um, zero mesh or, or uh, otherwise adjust it. And then you can sculpt into the sides or use additional software to, to work with that. You can also uh, take the end resulting mesh, even if you weren't using something like ZBrush, and you can adjust the UVs, uh, just like you would for an extrusion. If you extruded uh, something uh, that had UVs on it, you may have to adjust your UVs in order to be able to see these, these sides. Doing that will allow you to place things like displacement maps, or normal maps that would then go across this edge and allow you to add or simulate detail on them. So there's a number of solutions. Uh, often cases, these things are not going to be rendered in here. They're being taken off to other software. So that's, uh, that's just par for the course. Another feature that you should be aware of is Currently, we have a preview resolution. As I go ahead and increase that preview resolution, uh, it's regenerated and we get more detail in that surface. Um, a lot of things will have, if I went to, let's say, Perlin noise, we have a number of octaves that are being generated for this zoom back out so you can see this. And these octaves add detail just the same as changing the resolution will add detail. 
what this sort of equates to is if I just go into here, I'll bring this down to two. Um, if we look at this, this is uh, a, a fractal, uh, just like anything else, but we're just seeing uh, a slice of it. And as I increase this depth max, which is adding uh, octaves to this, you can see that shape deforms based on that new additional noise pattern. And as we go further, it deforms even for, further, but um, the, the amount of deformation is smaller. And as I go again through these different levels, I get more and more smaller details, but the shape changes much less. So this is something that we have to consider in terms of uh, when we're going to go ahead and build these, these surfaces. Um, changing that resolution is going to impact some of what we see uh, in terms of these details. The shapes may change to a, a certain degree. And the way that they're simulated, of course, will also depend on those smaller details because it has to take them into consideration in the calculations that are done there. So um, other things that process stuff a little bit further, like erosion, will change uh, considerably depending on the resolution that's there. So whether it be octaves or resolution, there'll be changes. Let's take a look at some of these other primitives. So mountain, we have the scale, we have all those other things that we've looked at for Perlin, another sort of primitive. It's different from, say, the Perlin you might be used to if you're accustomed to World Machine. Again, the idea is to give you something a little bit more detailed, a little bit more uh, environmentally um, shaped than, uh, say, the regular Perlin. However, if you want a regular Perlin, you can simply turn off this perturb and you get the Perlin that you're used to. So there's the possibility of working in that granular mode with the, you know, these, these starting primitives, um, but you don't have to work in this way. If we do work with these uh, additional features in here, we have a warp amplitude. And so this is changing that based on this. And then of course, a frequency which is applied on that. So smaller and smaller details applied along with that amplitude. And of course, the number of octaves, just the same as this here, so that those get more and more detailed. You can see those changes becoming uh, finer and that the shape deformation is less and less. It's more about adding the new details after a certain point. So very similar. If we went with Voronoi, another basic uh, primitive. Again, we have the same kind of idea here. We can add dual Voronoi patterns into each other. And we have the same kind of ideas of adjusting this uh, additional set of deformation to it. We have the over, overall scale of the Voronoi pattern to make it bigger or smaller. And then we have these scale factors, which are also present the other one, which uh, might be a little bit more visible here. If I change this, you'll see that they stretch in that one direction versus the other direction. And we can do this with here. You'll see it stretch in the other direction as well sort of compressing here. There is the different methods of Voronoi, which will um, be visible here. And then the different forms of Voronoi. I'll just click on one and they'll just um, arrow key down to kind of flip through them. So different formations of Voronoi. And again, very similar to World Machine if you're used to that. And as I said, if you simply just 
remove that distortion. You can see how that works. Voronoi Plus is another Voronoi pattern with a um, simpler setup and the way that it does deformation is in a horizontal manner rather than a vertical manner. Moving on, we have things like dunes. Dunes is a very simple primitive, which I'm sure you can guess creates dunes. I'm just going to sit, uh, quickly switch to 512 just to make these a little bit faster. So we have a scale for that. scales one noise pattern, the bigger deforming noise pattern, but not the other one. And it gives you a good starting point for dunes. There's not many settings here, and there's other ways that you can create dunes, but again, this is a starting point. Fault. Pretty straightforward. Adds a fault. We have a width of that, and you notice that the noise pattern doesn't really change. It just gets wider. We also have a depth for that. Again, pattern does not change, it just gets steeper. Then we have shrink, which allows us to kind of cut this off. And what's interesting with this particular piece of this is that if I use this shrink, I could potentially animate this by outputting a sequence of height maps. So going ahead and building, then changing the value, building, changing the value, building, and I could get an animated displacement map, which I could then use to give the idea of a fissure opening in a surface and eventually cracking all the way open. It has a scale of that um, noise pattern, which is generating it, so we can play with that and that will alter that noise pattern and of course the chaos in there um, how strong that deformation is then simple things like location where we can just slide it along that surface or change its angle rotate it and of course as always we have the seed on each one of these to change the, uh, the, the pattern if we want to make a different one of the same kind also, if you wanted to mutate multiple factors at the same time, you can use the mutate seeds option, which is right here, which you can use to um, change them all. So once you've set up something that you know looks like a really good mountain or structure or landform that you really like, but you want to make another one of that same kind, you can simply mutate the seed. Moving along, we have another simple primitive which is the gradient, again, for that granular idea. And there's different forms of gradient. Let's switch to the radial. And helix. I have a start and end to this. Other ones have different values, X and Y um, scale, linear, we have a direction. Igneous. Other simple one, 
we want to enhance these channels that are in here, simply turn that on. And what you'll see is those channels will get deeper. We have a power, which is the intensity of that fractal. So it'll push steeper, add more detail to it. And we also have an overall scale of the larger fractal. So the smaller details will remain roughly the same, while the bigger fractal will change in size. Line noise. Pretty straightforward. Type random, Gaussian, so on and so forth. We've seen the mountain already, we've seen the purlin already. Switching to plates. Here we can change the slant, going for a 45 degree angle. We can inverse that. So you can see how it changes the overall slant direction. We have an overall scale changing that noise pattern, but not the slant. We have a steepness. Essentially removing the slant altogether or breaking it up more. And then we have collusion, which will break up that overall formation making it look a little bit more sort of jagged rocky rather than um, sort of like a shattered sort of formation. We have slope noise, which is basically a, gra a gradient and a uh, purlin gives you this have amount of displacement, so how intense that is. We have an overall scale of that uh, noise pattern. We have a direction of the gradient. So which direction did the gradient point in? And all that works together. And we've seen the Voronoi and the Voronoi Plus. So the only things left to see would be um, your file node, which allows you to simply go ahead and load any height map information from any resource, be it, uh, say, um, taking from DEM files, um, digital elevation model files, uh, or height maps generated in World Machine or other overall software, um, Substance Designer, etc., etc. So um, you can work with any kind of height maps that are there. We also have this resource manager, which is in here. And that is coming through your resource manager and adding in um, a variety of different resources. So as this software continues to evolve, we can store meshes in there. All right now we've got the ability to get, um, say load a height map in there. And then they just become uh, available through this and then they become an output. So those are your essential primitives. Uh, you've seen how we can work with this software in a variety of different of ways and how these primitives kind of uh, are put together. So hopefully you found this fairly informative uh, from the, the starting standpoint. And uh, in the following videos, we'll continue on to look at some of these other tools and how they relate. And uh, I have other videos already started plus more to come which will deal with very specific recipes.